When I was in middle school, some boys decided to have a rating chart. It listed all the girls in my friend group on one column and our attributes on another. Boys were going to declare whether we were hot or not. Are you kidding? <laughs> I, was a, I was an awkward girl, pigeon-toed with buck teeth. This wasn't going to go well. I worked hard to compensate for my low self-esteem by being fun, funny, a little crazy. One day, a friend dared me to pull the fire alarm at school, and I actually did it. So when the results of the rating chart came back, I wasn't surprised. I rated high in personality and the absolute lowest in looks. Do you remember your middle school years? Would you be thrilled the boys thought you had a great personality? You guessed it. I was devastated. I had a boyfriend at the time. Brian was a sweet boy with a nice smile. We'd ice skate holding hands, hang out after school, talk on the phone at night. You know what's coming? He broke up with me. He said he really liked me, but his friends were making fun of him thanks to that rating chart. I wish I could say that was the only thing that happened to me in my childhood that taught me I wasn't enough. And it didn't end there. For much of my life, I'd wake up in the morning, head to my bathroom mirror, and focus on what I was not. I always wanted to be thinner, with better skin, fuller lips, believe me. The list was endless. But can you relate? Turns out I wasn't alone. According to research by the Dove Foundation, where they interviewed 10,000 women in 10 different countries, do you know what they discovered? Only 4% of all women worldwide believe they're beautiful. Do you believe that? Are you curious about men? I was too, so I did a little research. Turns out, no statistics exist. Why? Turns out men are biologically hardwired to overestimate their physical attractiveness. <laughs> so maybe you're saying, all right, I get it, but this shouldn't matter. After all, beauty is only skin deep. That's what I told myself until my friend Wendy invited me to a style workshop. I remember thinking, a style workshop? Really? I would rather spend the day cleaning toilets. I was no fashionista, quite the opposite. I was the person who would head to my closet and start the long, tiresome process of finding something to wear. I'd try on outfit after outfit as a pile of discarded clothes slowly gathered on the floor. I'd eventually emerge always dissatisfied, often frazzled and late for wherever I needed to be. The more important the event, the longer I'd get stuck in my closet. Job interview, important presentation, date night, that was the worst. I clearly needed the style workshop, so I reluctantly went. And it changed my life. Have you ever had an experience where you realized everything you had done up to that moment set you up for what was next? My career had landed me in the center of the internet boom, with my final position, Divisional VP of Brand Marketing at AOL. So done with corporate life, I went on to start my business as a portrait photographer. I photographed weddings, babies, and families, and soon realized that I had a passion for not, not only helping women look beautiful, but feel beautiful through pictures. So maybe you're wondering, what does marketing and photography have to do with style? It turns out everything. I saw that the same principles businesses use to create a brand identity can apply to us. That the same art concepts used to create a beautiful photograph can be applied to how we dress and adorn ourselves. That looking great doesn't have to be reserved for those fashionistas who have an eye for style. It can be for all of us. And when we do look great and feel great about how we look, it ignites a chain reaction that allows us to be great. And it turns out there's science to back it up. It's called enclosed cognition, a term coined by two professors at Northwestern University. They did a study where they asked college students 
to perform a complicated task. Some were asked to wear a doctor's white coat, some no coat, and some that same white coat, but this time they were told it was a painter's jacket. Well, the results were remarkable. The students in the doctor's coat made 50% fewer errors on the same set of tasks. The only a difference was the, the coat they were wearing. The research proved we have a shift in identity, mood, and ability simply by changing the clothes we have on. And I bet you felt it too. Have you ever had a bad hair day? Spilt coffee on your shirt before you went into an important meeting? Overslept and had to run out of the house without showering, shaving, putting your makeup on? Compare that to a time you got a great new haircut. You got to wear some new clothes that made you feel like a million bucks. Maybe you had your makeup professionally applied. Did you hold your head a little higher? Speak up more often? Is that when you had the confidence to ask for a raise, a date? to be treated with respect? We know the answer. When we put on formal clothing, we feel more confident, even powerful. When we wear casual clothes, we feel more open and accessible. When we put on exercise clothes, we feel healthier. And when we wear bright colors, we feel happier. We become what we wear to the point we often play out the role of the clothes we have on. And how we look impacts how others see us too. Get this, studies show mothers pay more attention to good looking babies. What? And babies actually pay more attention to attractive adults. Professionally, attractive people make more money and get more promotions. Personally, they have more friends and appeal, uh, attract more uh, appealing partners. Plenty of research proves human beings are hardwired to respond to how people and objects look. We needed that for survival. As I've transitioned my business from photography to image consulting, I've witnessed hundreds of personal transformations simply by helping my clients change their appearance. I've seen it in professional women of all ages, races, and colors, in straight women and gay women, and full-time moms, and even teenagers. The process starts with the creation of a personal brand, where you decide on the impression you want to make on others. Then, the same way companies leverage fonts, colors, and packaging to communicate their brand, you can communicate yours through your hair, your clothes, everything you wear. Next, you can follow the seven elements of art to become your own masterpiece. If you think about it, we are a, a three-dimensional canvas of colors, shapes, proportions, scale, and more. It's all about learning how to leverage those techniques to showcase your best features and camouflage the things you don't like so much. Take Debbie. She left the corporate world to start her own business. As she stepped into a life she loved, she got healthier and trimmer. But that left her with a closet full of clothes four sizes too big. Check out what happens when she learns to dress her new size, shape, and scale. Amazing, right? She started to get compliments everywhere she went. This, of course, boosted her self-confidence, -conf and she believes directly translated into success for her new business. Vanessa struggled with weight all her life, up and down with a closet of ill-fitting clothes that left her anything but confident. A few years ago, she was in a situation where she needed self-confidence. Her company was downsizing, and she was actually asked to reapply for her own job. The competition was tight. She needed to go into those interviews at her absolute best. Well, we started by finding clothes with the perfect fit hair and makeup to complement her features. She learned that when she wore bright colors, it totally energized her. She went into those interviews totally self-assured and saved that job. Mary Ellen is brilliant, but she was struggling with low self-esteem and being heard in a male-dominated workplace. She was ready for that to change. In her case, we started with a dramatic new hair color and cut. 
Then we reinvented her wardrobe. Through that process, a new sense of power emerged that men noticed, and she continues to get promotion after promotion. Not only that, Mary Ellen's new sense of confidence, a uh, new sense of style, gave her the confidence to rock the stage in her lifetime passion as a jazz singer. Naomi believed she needed to hide perceived flaws in her personality and in her appearance. On the inside, she was a fearless go-getter. On the outside, not so much. Look at what happens when she learned to match her outer persona to her inner confidence. Pretty amazing. You may recall it was Leonardo da Vinci that defined ideal body proportions back in 1490. Look at what happens when Naomi uses those principles and just simply adjusts her waistline and shirt length. It makes her look and it made her feel leaner and taller without losing a single pound. And you know what? It works for men too. This is John. He's vision impaired. He couldn't tell what he looked like. He couldn't tell if his clothes matched, if they fit right, if they were torn, if they were stained. This would leave anybody self-conscious about putting themselves out there. Just like the ladies, he learned about personal branding and dressing art principles. Look at that. He quickly discovered what it felt like when clothes conformed to his physique. He learned to trust the world to be his mirror, and its feedback has been tremendous. This boosted his self-worth and desire in re-entering the, the dating scene, where, by the way, he's getting a lot of attention. These before and after stories are powerful examples that beauty is truly more than skin deep. These men and women learned to make a great first impression that small changes have a huge impact, that when they dress their brand and their body, it not only changes how they see themselves, but how the world sees them. Debbie, Vanessa, Mary Ellen, and Naomi can now be counted in that 4% of women who believe they are beautiful. And not only that, they feel confident and successful. But as a society, I'm sorry, but we have work to do. I wish I could say the days of rating charts that leave girls feeling less than enough are behind us. But let's not forget Facebook originated as Face Mash, a hot or not rating system for female college students at Harvard of all places. We now know more than ever that the constant judging and comparing that takes place on social media can negatively impact our mental health and it especially accentuates low self-esteem and body image issues in adolescent girls. So beauty is not skin deep. When women and girls learn to express who we are, to love how we look, when we know we are showcasing our best features and bringing our inner essence out, it changes our lives. And that can change the world. Thanks.